Okay, okay, welcome back, suckers. Now we picked this little beauty up. This is a SIP MIGBAIT Turbo 130 dual purpose MIG welder. I think they were first made in 1998. Found somebody selling this little peach at the good price of 25 bucks. He thought it came with gas, but the gas bottle is empty. 2014. Said that it was in his garage. Didn't claim it was his, but said it was in his garage for two years. Other people who used it claimed that it wouldn't, you know, basically wouldn't work. But since looking at it myself, they have the gas connected. I'll show you the wire in a moment. The wire inside is actually a mild steel wire for using with the gas. But if you come down here, they have the torch sitting on negative that's usually for flux core wire so yeah strange looks like they had it on the wrong setting but he claims it just wouldn't go so let's open it up and have a look and we'll get this sucker started working again if you have a sit mig mate and it's not putting the wire through it's supposed to be i'm gonna show you how to fix it man let's get it open Another thing I'd like to show you is this gun doesn't really look like it's had much abuse whatsoever. I'd expect this handle to be mega scratched up. Even when I wiped it down, it didn't have that much dirt on it. So I'm looking forward to this one. Right, get this thing opened up. Right, slide this off. Now he did say originally there was no wire in it, sorry there's no wire, you can't test it, so I didn't actually expect it to be able to turn on, and I still bought it. But the mechanism is here, the screw is down all the way and it's clamped down, it seems fine, but when you turn it on and you try boosting the wire, it's making the noise as if something's happening. When you open the case and look, the sprag gear down here, the roller, is actually turning, and every now and then it'll jolt through a millimeter or two but that's it so i don't know if we have space let me flip it on its side and show you what i found right guys so to show you we're down here see this roller now this roller is meant to be perfectly flat running surface with this but it's not you have to press that down for it to sit flat it's just relaxing now see it sits on a peg up here, just a pivot point, plastic pivot point. You can see the gap between the pivot and this bracket. I'm going to press it down and see the play it's got. Now I checked online, some people said this pivot up here is basically flexing out the way, causing this to happen, but it's not. It's actually this part here. I'll pull it off and let you see. There's usually a screw holding it on. Let me get you over here a moment. Right, this is the piece that slips over the pivot pin, and this is all that's holding it there. It's this that's causing the flex. So when it's on, it's been able just to teeter-totter. The hole as well, I think, is oh, slightly too large. So it's just it's letting it get that little bit of flex. Like when it's under tension, it's the only free place it's got to go is to lift. So that there is a problem. Right. Get that back in the way it's meant to be. Right, so it's this that's the issue. Now, I was thinking about making an, another solid bit out of metal, but other people have put a brace. I'll show you. Hold on, stick that back on. Other people have put a brace from this screw hole to this screw hole. Now, I pressed down on it to see if that's what it was, and that is barely moving. It's this that's doing all the moving. The whole thing's flexed. So if we can get a piece of metal that will go from this hole to this hole while coming out. Yeah, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, what I mean is this is a lot lower than up here. So surface wise it protrudes out further. So I cut a piece here where if there's a drill hole here that's going to line back up in here. And some extra meat to come out over this way to keep this whole thing kept down flush. And it curves around. You put a bend in it up about here. And another bend up here. 
just to raise it out another hole down here and that should clamp everything in place or you could go one over and replace two screw holes with the same clamp just so it's got some extra force which I might end up doing now I have just came across a small bike spanner I'm thinking about finding ways of just drilling a hole somewhere give it a bend another bend come along drill another hole where it needs to be and it's just going to pin it in place so don't even have to buy any extra metal you could cut it out of any spare bit of metal that you have so the plan is basically we're going to replace we take this screw out of here this screw is out we're going to build a bracket that'll go and screw into place here screw into place here and keep everything flush and flat and that my friends should keep this roller perfectly in line and then we should be in business so if you do have a sip some form of MIGMATE, maybe even a Clark, some other kind of... I've run into a few welders and a lot of them seem to have the same complaints and you find the same issues and it usually is the mechanism somehow. On this, everything seems to be working fine except the wire moving and it's definitely, definitely that bearing. It's sitting totally diagonal. So rather than the two surfaces rolling together, it's one of them's on its edge, way down the bottom below. Basically the roller has two line grooves for different size wire. The bottom of this roller is running on the empty slot. It's barely even contacting the front groove that everything's going through. So let's get it sorted. Right guys, well, slightly out of breath because I've got a couple of awesome saws I could have done this with and chose to do it by hacksaw. But yeah, separated this from here. This will become the new piece for here and bent to fit. So first we'll get this hole sorted out, taken care of. And then we'll get the bends in. Right, so we mark it for the first drill hole. We'll get this drilled out. I've put in a quick scratch where I want the first bend. We'll get that taken care of first, then we'll find out where the second bend needs to be. Might be pretty close to it. Might be a bit challenging, but let's do it. Right guys, so I've got my spanner all smashed into shape that I need it to be. I've got the first hole. It's a bit, even a bit cleared out, but the first hole here. I have lined up and the spanner is bent in a way that it's not perfectly in line. It's kind of like sticking a, sticking out away from the body a bit. So that, I don't know if you can see inside at the reels, but when I press in with this, you see how this bit's moving. It's leveling everything up the way it's supposed to be. So, we just got to mark off here, put another hole, I'll probably just put a slit, a couple of holes if it doesn't line up, and then whatever's there will just keep it pinned in, and we should be good to go, so, yeehaw. Right guys, so this part has been put on, it's all lined up, we've greased up the springs, it looked a bit rusted as well, we've relieved the pressure a little bit, now to see if it comes through. Came on, okay. Yeah! Sorted. Like a dream. So, already I can tell you, I tried it a moment ago and it was much better, absolutely much better and working like a dream. Only every now and then it would tug. And I checked this out, and this didn't even want to move. That was like mega, mega tight. So I just undone the knob out the end, pulled the spring out, filled it up full of grease and the washer, slammed it back on again, and just tightened up the tiniest little bit just so it was a little bit of pressure. That was actually wound right in. Super, super tight. Well, now it's working perfect. So it's... There's no drag, there's no haul on it, it's not pausing, it's not stuttering, it's just smooth, absolutely smooth. And I am happy. 25 bucks and a bike spanner and a little bit of grease.
and no doubt this is going to weld like a dream. Well, maybe not a dream, but it's going to weld better than 25 bucks worth. Now I've already got the outer shell here and gave it a bit of a paint with what was left over in a pound can after cleaning up the rust a little bit. There we go. Looking good. Right, well, my screws here just ain't coming out. They're just chewing up in the inside, so no doubt I'll probably just hit this with a bit of sandpaper or smooth it off, touch it up, get rid of all the flicky bits of paint, and, yeah, deal with it that way. Just seal it in a bit. Just unsightly, but, yeah. I'll well, see if it works. Right. So there you have it guys, I'm not going to bother welding just now, it's a mild steel welding wire in it, I don't have any flux core or gas, so can't really do that to show, but you'll see it in the channel working away. Uh, this was just to show how to fix your wire feed problem on any cheap MIG welder, doesn't have to be the SIP MIG mate, but uh, I read online these are plagued with issues. Mine just went from a stuttering mess that couldn't do a thing, to just smooth gliding. So, I can't say more than that really. This has been the SIP MIG Mate 130 Turbo Dual Purpose MIG Welder, probably from 1998. Said it was non runnable, non fixable, worth it for parts, but we've got it and it's going. So, I'm happy. 25 bucks. It'll do me. So, there you go, guys. You want to fix your wire feed mechanism in a welder? That's how you do it.